Fernandez and Lucy Moon, where today's show is dedicated to one of the greatest boy bands of all time. Yes, the boys are in town. It's Westwood! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, but first, as we mentioned earlier, I'm a celebrity is back, and apparently, jungle warfare has already broken out because of the star sleeping habits. Well, they're causing a bit of a stink. The barrage of snoring, sleep talking, and passing wind <laughs> is keeping everyone awake. Freddie Starr and Chrissy Rock are among the culprits, but it's Mark Wright who is causing the most problems, with the others having to block their ears as his snores echo around the camp. A show insider said yesterday his snoring is so bad it's a mystery. He's persuaded so many girls to sleep with him. <laughs> <laughs> I think they did a lot of sleeping. sleeping yeah. um, so do you think it's possible to be attracted to a man who's, shall we call it, an unattractive sleeper? I think, um, yeah, Steve does a little bit of snoring, but he doesn't snore when he's actually asleep. It's just when he's getting to sleep. So I just sort of cross my fingers and hope it doesn't last too long, and then it's fine. Just a little bit of... Mm. Just a bit of... And I go, oh, and he turns over and goes... Oh, and that's it. And we get over it, you know. It's high end of it with the babies, you know. We're like, oh, shut up. But it's all right. But I, I, one of my best friends went out with the lad once for a long time, actually, and I stayed over a couple of nights once, and the first time I stayed over... I'm not joking, he snored that much, it ricocheted, I mean, like a pneumatic drill, round the house. And I was like, what's that? What's that? And she went, is him snoring? And I went, is this every night? And I, I've never had that, I mean, it was, it's what? Like my house. Is it? Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Not me, oh, not me snoring. No, it's Steve, <laughs> not me. No, it, that's what he's like. Literally, well, it feels like the, the walls are going. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's out. <laughs> and out. He's had people move hotel rooms and complain about the noise. Oh, um, Andrew, how do you do it? Yeah. And we, we went away last weekend, and we all, we all went. We, you know, did a kids thing, and uh, the kids were going mad. <laughs> hey, guys, sleep! Guys, <laughs> no We were all squashed in one bed. Didn't go, was... How can you sleep with that man? <laughs> <laughs> Like you'd never met him before. That's it. Well, Finley got a bit tearful and Amy was like that. And Daddy! Well, you be quiet. So, yeah, we've just, just how it is in our house. I, oh, I snore only when I'm a little bit drunk. <laughs> we all do that. Which isn't every night, believe it or not. But I went out last week, Mark couldn't make it. Um, and I came home and I thought, oh, where is he? And he's, he'd already gone to sleep in the other room, oh. in the spare room, because he knows I'm going to be snoring. And one night in the morning, he got up, I got up, I woke up, and I thought, where's he gone now? Because he gets up in the middle of the night. A, if I'm snoring, because I'm drunk, or if he's got the blow-offs, he'll go and sleep in the other room, because that is, that's just a no-no in our house. There's absolutely no way, no one ever blows off in bed. I think it's a proper deal-breaker. <laughs> <laughs> it was something that could cause terrible problems so he disappears into the other room but he said the one time that i was snoring so loud he couldn't even get to sleep in the other room and he had to go upstairs to the living room with earplugs and put a cushion over his head because he couldn't sleep <laughs> well, with, with me as uh, as you know it's me that is the terrible snorer i mean uh, you know it's just so awful on a train because i'm constantly doing that <laughs> 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 Coming down there on this this man's shoulder. <laughs> and then Tim, the other week we were at this do in, in Durham, and it, honestly it ruins his night if he goes, How many hotel rooms have we got? And I went, We've only got one that's not left. Oh, I'm not gonna enjoy that, I'm gonna do that. So anyway, earplugs, whatever. Anyway, woke up the next morning, he'd gone. And uh, he had apparently, well, he'd, he'd driven home to um, my sister's house in, in Stocksville about 45 minutes, couldn't handle it. And then he showed me this video, and the video was me. <laughs> And he, his hand comes in like this. <laughs> <laughs> so then when we're together, I'm like that, right? Not then you've got him, who snores when he's drunk, but if he's not, he's sort of a bit like Steve's type yeah. of snorer. But he's the world's worst talker. So you've got me going, <laughs> you've got him going, ha, 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 whistling for the dog. <laughs> 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 You've got Louie next door, who, because he had Hirschsprung disease, he's got the worst wind in the world, going, oh! <laughs> <laughs> orchestral manoeuvres in the dark. How are you, Pip? Oh, my God! Oh, my no. God! No. 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 No.
Today's show is dedicated to one of the most successful boy bands of all time. It was over 14 years ago they first got together, managed by none other than Louis Walsh. Now, after 44 million albums sold worldwide, 14 UK number one singles, 17, uh, 17 seven number one albums, uh, 10 sellout tours and a performance for the Pope, they have dramatically decided to call it a day. <gasps> Luckily, it's not before they treat us to an album that celebrates their greatest hits. Telling us what it feels like to be walking away from it all and reflecting on their successes. It's Shane and Nikki from Westlife. Yeah. seen you honestly yeah, no, so how does it feel to be walking away from all that uh it feels quite weird at the moment yeah. to be honest because we've well for us we've known about it for obviously a good few months we made the decision sure. kind of three or four months ago but um it does feel weird you know because everything we do now is the kind of the last time we do something as a band like yeah. last time we do this women as a band yeah. and you know every, every different no, thing we're back tomorrow back tomorrow, <laughs> back tomorrow. <laughs> but, uh, how yeah. did it all come about though what what sparked it what started it I think it was just, uh, it's inevitable after 14 years, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, we've been doing it, you know, daily, daily, daily for 14 years. And, and I think it's, it's one of those things where you just kind of look yourself in the mirror one time and, and speak to the lads and, and say, look, it's probably best to, to move on. We'd, we'd come to the end of a contract that um, we'd renegotiated over the, during the 14 years lots of times. And Sony really wanted to, to, you know, do a new deal again. But it was just it was one of those things where we said, mm. no, we couldn't, right. we couldn't yeah. give the commitment to it, all of us. So. I think you've done it in such an amazing way. I mean, we recently saw Steps and how horrible it was there, split up, and it took them 10 years to get over it. But yeah. you're, I've well, just seen you, that you're all still best proper yeah, mates, yeah. aren't no, yeah, you? That's, that's and you've done best. it properly. Yeah, that's the best thing about it. You know, we are, our friendship is 100% intact, which is great. And um, it's kind of, I think it's more about just moving on with our lives and, seeing what else is out there. Mm. I think we all want to do different things and it's very hard to do that and do Westlife and, and be, you have to be 100% committed to Westlife. Sure. Yeah. What's been, because I remember years ago when Take That first ever split up, that there was kind of help, Take That fan helplines and things. I mean, oh. what's been the sort of initial reaction from, from the fans? We've spoken to a few of them earlier in, in here. What's been the reaction? Well, it's, it's been, the devastated. It's been, like, on Twitter and stuff like that for all of us, it's been really overwhelming and stuff, you know, but it's a different thing from when Take That did it, you know, that w it, our fan base isn't them, um, wouldn't be as young because we're going 14 years, it would have been young at one point, but not now. So fans, I think, you know, kind well, we've of... We've got a helpline at the end for people who are... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they all need a helpline. I think we're, I think, <laughs> I think we're the ones that need a helpline. <laughs> mentioned, of course, your, your greatest hits album. What sort of songs can people expect on there? Well, it's got all the, obviously, the 14 number ones. Um, luckily, I suppose, we've, we've got such a collage of, of, of number ones and, and hits like that. It's actually spread out over two albums. Um, yeah. It was very hard to pick which one to go on which, but it's uh, all, the, all the hits we've had over the years. We've had, like, 28 singles, I think, wow. released. And so have you kept Brian McFadden's voice on them? We have, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's the exact same way they were made, yeah. There's some live versions on there as well of uh -huh. tracks we've done over the years, and they're like different, we've done different vocal arrangements for them and stuff oh, like And that. was so that a, a conscious extra. decision? Did you think, no, this is how the fans first heard the record, we're going to keep it that way? Or? I think it's, yeah, I think it was uh, exactly that reason. I think, you know, they, they bought the single that way when, it, when Brian was in the band, and he was part of our band for six years, you know, so... You know, we have to, I suppose, you know, honour yeah. that as well. But you're um, all still really young now. So how old are you when you we started? We started when we were eight. I'm <laughs> 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 uh, 22 now, you know, so it's, it's mad, you know. So it's how old were you when you had your first? You were eight when you had your first number? Uh, yeah, we were uh, 18 when we started. Wow. 17, right. 17, 18 when we started. Yeah. And your first number one was, um, what yeah, was it? I swear it again, yeah. Number oh, one. Oh, wow. Four, and, 13 and years ago. Yeah. How's Louis? What, what did he have to say? He was still not talking to us. He's yeah, devastated. He's devastated. <laughs> <laughs> he is genuinely devastated, yeah. Oh. I think we've, did you, know, we were you together relationship. at the beginning, Louis? No, the boys, Shane, Mark and Keane, are from the west coast of Ireland, and they were in school together and put the band together originally. Right. Took it to Louis and got rid of a few lads and brought myself and Brian in uh, through auditions in Dublin. Uh, but yeah, Louis, Louis's devastated, you know, he's, I think, for him, you know, we're, we, we kind of... Yeah. It's not going well, is it? He's having a bad week. Have you spoken to him since Kitty's oh. left? Have you, have you no, texted no, him no. or anything? He's not the most speaking to him. No, 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 he is speaking to him. But for, for about three or four weeks, he actually didn't talk to any of us because he was hot. He, and I was like, why did, what, what's wrong with him? And he's like, I thought you changed your mind. I thought you did have a bad week. But no, it's... Really? It's funny. In front of some amazing people. I mean, I mentioned, of course, you performed in front of the Pope. Who would see? Who would you see as your most incredible um, person that you've performed in front of? I think the Loose Women Girls. Yeah. 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 Yeah
very yeah, good. That was good. Now, really? <laughs> not really. Probably the Pope. We performed yeah. to the, the Queen as well, which is really nice. She came to Ireland for the visit there, the big historic visit. We performed yeah. for her, so that was pretty cool as well. But over That's the years, when we've done some amazing things, like, you know, met Barack Obama on a couple wow. of occasions. and yeah. Twice um, in one year, actually, which is weird. We never met any other president, bef president before. Yeah. Uh -huh. exactly. So it was calmer than any secret. Oh, yes. big time, yeah, yeah, yeah. Booking Honestly. us out for private gigs and everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> over the White the House. House. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have to ask, you both seem pretty laid back, but are any of you bossy? Bossy? Yeah. Who's the bossiest, yeah. do you think, of your boss? Out of us two. Out of all of us. Out of all of you. Probably Keenan Marcus. Probably Keenan Marcus is not here. Like. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, watching, they're watching backstage. Probably, uh, probably, probably Keenan, yeah. yeah. Well, what about in your, in your marriages? Do you have, did you have like a one? Is your you wife's boss or your boss? I'm, I'm not the boss, put it that way. Got You're it. a smart man. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Smart man. Good answer, right. love. Yeah. Okay, it's time for a break now, but uh, <laughs> don't worry. We are going to be back in three when Shane and Nikki will be joined by Keenan Mark and the boys are going to be singing the global <gasps> hit Flying Without Me. <laughs> <laughs> 